Let's talk about the world's biggest garbage dump, space. Houston, we have a problem. Unlike on Earth, when we stop using something or it becomes broken, we can let it fall to the ground. But in space, nothing falls. There are hundreds of millions of pieces of junk up there. And the problem has already caused astronauts to scramble for safety. A tense moment on the International Space Station. The object to be moving from uh, port to starboard in front of the vehicle. The worst case scenario has already had the Hollywood treatment. Explore, been hit. And all this has got scientists worried. We cannot wait longer, it's time to act. So how did space become a junkyard? How do you pick up trash moving faster than a speeding bullet? And why could something called the Kessler syndrome make spaceflight impossible? Space junk can be anything from old satellites and spent rockets to stray bolts and even tiny flecks of paint. Now, most of this stuff is floating around in low Earth orbit. That's the part of space closest to Earth and the part that's used the most. There are thousands of satellites up there and the International Space Station too. And stuff there is moving fast. Objects can zip around at more than 27,000 kilometers per hour. So if a piece of junk hits something, packs a punch. We're looking at possible collisions between working satellites and bits of junk at these incredibly high speeds that can be catastrophic to the objects that collide. Satellites are not built to withstand such energies impacting them. The problem's been building since we started launching things into space. First, pictures from a Czech newsreel of Bleep, the Russian Red Moon. From the first satellite, Sputnik, in 1957 until today. There are now more than 7,500 orbiting the Earth, a mix of operational satellites and dead ones that have just been left there. And the numbers are only going up, way up. Ignition and lift off. SpaceX alone plans to launch more than 40,000 satellites over the next few years. And other companies also have several thousand in the pipeline. Why so many? Well, two main reasons. The first is modern life depends on satellites like crazy. From mobile phones and GPS navigation. In 100 meters, turn right. To military uses and weather forecasting. Now, the second reason there are so many satellites is that it's getting much easier to launch them. They're getting much smaller and a bunch of private companies are getting involved. Some are even creating satellite broadband mega constellations, ranging from several hundred satellites to a few thousand. But the business of space infrastructure is making a mess because every satellite launch creates space junk. The rockets sending them up there have parts known as stages, which break off. And when the satellite is finally released, the protective cover, nuts, bolts, and wires are also left behind. Now, some of this junk loses altitude and burns up in the Earth's atmosphere, but not all of it. The upper stage of the rocket that delivers it will frequently stay in orbit. It might only stay there for a few months or a few years, but some have been up there for decades. There are also other ways that space junk gets created. And there are two major incidents you need to know about. China last Thursday succeeded in shooting down one of its own aging weather satellites. That was the first. It was in 2007 when China tested a missile to destroy satellites. The strike created 35,000 bits of space shrapnel, the largest junk creating incident in history. The other incident happened in 2009 when a dead Russian satellite collided with an operational American one. Both were destroyed and thousands more pieces of space junk were created. Those two events alone increased large space debris by a massive 70%. But it's not just big pieces of junk that are the problem. If anything, the bigger pieces are easier to deal with because they can be tracked and hopefully avoided. But the tiny ones, tracking them is much harder and they can still cause serious damage. A millimeter sized object can definitely damage a working satellite, but something one centimeter in size can definitely uh, render a satellite that we care about uh, useless. So think what that could mean for Google Maps and all those other satellite services we rely on. And then think about what it could mean for spacecraft carrying people. Take it 
Since 1999, the ISS has had to change course almost 30 times to avoid a collision. The worst case is uh, the station is hit by a smaller size object, 10 centimeters, and it punches a hole into the pressurized, uh, you know, compartment somewhere. That's going to be really uh, serious. And then there's the Kessler syndrome. In the 1970s, NASA scientist Donald Kessler suggested that space junk could reach a kind of tipping point. As more junk builds up, the more crashes there will be, and in turn, even more junk is created. It could lead to a never-ending cycle of destruction and create an exponentially growing ring of junk around our planet. For you WALL-E fans out there, it's a bit like this. In reality, it would neither be that easy nor that cute. Ultimately, that ring of junk could make many kinds of space activity too dangerous. Basically, we'd all be stuck on Earth. So much for that getaway weekend to the moon. If we made a line from 1 to 10 and the Kessler syndrome was 10, everybody would say, we don't want to get to that line. We want to be somewhere before we get to that point where it's unusable. So what's the answer? Well, the first recommendation is stop polluting. The space debris community has come up with a set of guidelines to mitigate that proliferation of debris to flatten the curve. They say things like, when you plan a space mission, you ought to have a plan for its end of life. You're either going to boost the old spacecraft up incredibly high out of harm's way, or you have to have enough fuel left for it to lower its orbit and get dragged into the Earth's atmosphere. People have also been experimenting with ways to collect the trash, like giant nets, fishing in orbit, if you like. Or there's pinning a tail on a satellite to create enough drag so it slows down and enters the atmosphere to burn up. Or powerful magnets that could collect the junk. But the problem is, who's going to pay for the cleanup? and who's going to police it. There isn't like one authority who can say, right, you made this junk, you go and clean it up and enforce that. But there's a lot of reliance on um, people being good space citizens. Most people are not compliant with the guidelines because the guidelines are not in a space law. So, so it's up to individual countries to take these guidelines, make these into space law, and then enforce these things on their own citizens. But so far, not a single country in the world has actually done that. And time is running out. If I look at the current environment, it's it's not too late, but it's 5 to 12. It's it's really, we, we have to act now because it will take time to develop the technology needed. These are mistakes of the past, and we have to correct them. Space is being colonized by us humans and our technology faster than ever. But the garbage is piling up. Someone's got to take out the trash. In case you missed it, check out our last episode about what's going on in Lebanon. And make sure to subscribe to Al Jazeera's YouTube channel so you don't miss our next one. See you next week. <laughs>